Hi guys and welcome back to Wilded Beard Reviews and welcome back to Filmography Friday, a series where we take one writer, director, actor, producer, composer, whatever, and we look at their entire body of work from their first endeavor to their most recent endeavor. We are continuing our series today on M. Night Shyamalan. We're on to his third big movie, Signs, a movie starring Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix, Abigail Breslin, and Rory Culkin. So this uh, movie... I think gets a little bit more of a hard time than it should. It's uh, kind of like I talked about in my review of The Sixth Sense. It had been a long, long time since I've seen this one. And honestly, I may have only seen it one, maybe two two other times uh, previously before I watched it uh, last night. And I really appreciated this movie a lot more the second time I watched it. I've been finding that with with these these movies so far. You know, it's been a long time since I've seen all of them. Now that I'm kind of a more mature cinema goer or movie watcher, and I'm kind of doing this critic thing, uh, I have a more discerning eye and I look for different things in a movie. And so a lot of what uh, Shyamalan has going on in his films, I can pick up on the pieces there. A little more on picking up on pieces in a little bit. Um, so of course this movie kind of follows um, a, a corn farmer with his brother and his two children. Um, and they wake up one morning and there are crop circles out in their cornfield. And there are apparently crop circles all around the world which leads to an alien invasion. And um, their house gets uh, overrun by aliens at one point. but. While that may be kind of the, the high level uh, summary of this movie, this movie is not about that. Um, yes, that's what goes on in the movie, but this movie is really about a reverend, uh, Mel Gibson's character, who has l lost his wife very tragically and has lost his faith in God. And it's about him refinding that faith and the alien invasion and a couple key um, miracles, if you will. Um, leading him back to finding his faith so there is that's what i really found striking about this this movie watching it again after so long is you know in my mind i remember all the alien stuff i remember um spoilers just 17 year old movie so we're gonna be talking about spoilers um you know the fact that the aliens are alert they, they burn when they get water on them um the fact that uh when joaquin phoenix has the the baseball bat and he uses that as a weapon, um, you know, other things, M. Night Shyamalan's cameo in this one, which was a little heavy-handed, um, you know, a lot of other kind of plot points that revolve around the aliens, the, uh, there's a scene where the family is running in their, in their house, kind of retreating back into the basement, there's a couple alien fingers coming out from under the door, there's the, uh, the footage from the birthday party in Brazil, I believe, where it walks, uh, the alien walks across, um, and then the scene in the very beginning where the alien shows up at the house and they, uh, Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix run around to try to catch it. So I remembered a lot of the alien invasion aspects of this movie, but I didn't remember the what this movie is really about, and that's Mel Gibson's journey back to finding God. And that's what I really related to in this movie, what I felt much more engaging than the alien invasion in this movie. That's not to say that the alien invasion part isn't good, it's just that that is the impetus for the real story that's going on here. So um, I thought some of the more striking things in this movie were um, there's a conversation between Gibson and Phoenix when they're sitting on the couch and they're kind of whispering to each other because the kids are asleep on their laps as they're watching the, the news coverage of the alien invasion. And Mel Gibson explains that there are two kinds of people on this earth. There's the people that something good happens to them and they consider it a miracle that someone up there was watching out for them. And then there's the second kind of person who um, doesn't believe and there are they're more of a, hey, that was just a happy turn of luck for me. Um, and so in this movie, he is basically describing who he was and who he is now. He used to believe in miracles because he was, of course, a reverend, a pastor there in his town. And now he is very much the second person. He can't forgive and he is angry at God for um, letting his wife die. So he's chosen not to believe anymore. And so it's it's about his journey coming back to that second one through the miracles or the signs that occur over the course of the movie. So I'm um, just kind of listing those off. One is his son being an asthmatic and his throat being closed up when the alien shoots poison gas into his face so he, he doesn't die. One is, just like I mentioned a second ago, Joaquin Phoenix's character having um, his 507-foot uh, uh, home run 
uh, record bat right there in the living room. He can use that as a weapon. And then his his daughter leaving water glasses all over the house, so they can use that to uh, fend off the alien that's there in their house. So all of those signs kind of coalescing to you know bring him back, seeing those as miracles versus chance again and bringing him back to believing. Um, and then that very end, that very tag scene where you see him kind of come out of the bathroom and he's once again dressed in his in his uh, black shirt with the with the collar. Um, so I really liked his progression in this movie. I think that's um, that's more the subtext than the the kind of overtext in in this movie. The you know the underlying story versus the the overlying story, however you want to describe that. So I really enjoyed that. Now some of the things I didn't enjoy with this movie is I think some of the pacing and the acting isn't quite there, especially in the beginning. Um, the very, maybe the first 20 to 30 minutes, the acting is really, really stiff. It's almost like everyone was bored and they're all kind of monotone and um, just it's just not quite there and the movie kind of opens up near the end as things get progressing get more exciting and, and more in depth um also the scene near the beginning where the alien was on the roof of the barn and then gibson and phoenix run around to chase it i thought that was a little early in in the movie kind of a, a weird pacing issue a weird kind of scripting issue um also given that this was m night Shyamalan's third big film. Everyone saw The Sixth Sense and was blown away. Everyone saw, well, most people I would say saw Unbreakable and were again blown away. And both of those movies have a big twist, which when you re-watch those movies, you can see the footprints and fingerprints of those twists coming, but they're hidden really, really well. It's interesting watching movies that have a big twist pardon me, a second time so you can see where the, the paths are leading and the things you missed the first time because you didn't know what you were looking for. Um, in this movie, in Signs, those pieces aren't hidden quite as well as they should be. You can, with The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable, you were handed all these puzzle pieces, but you didn't know there was a puzzle to put together. By this time, once is a happenstance, twice is a coincidence, and a third time when you go see a third M. Night Shyamalan movie, you're looking for the pieces to put together to try and figure out what the twist is. And I would venture to say that the pieces are apparent enough that you can put them together before the movie puts them together for you. And that is one of the bigger downfalls of this movie. Um, the scene with... Um, where uh, Mel Gibson's character goes to M. Night Shyamalan's character, Ray, the veterinarian, the man who uh, killed his wife um, with the car wreck, he, M. Night Shyamalan's character says, I don't think they like water, they haven't landed anywhere near water, I'm going to go to a lake to be safe. I think that is one of the key missteps in this movie for a number of reasons. One, it lets us in on the water thing. Um, it's his daughter constantly harps on, she's always drinking different waters, which... Um, without Shyamalan's character, cameo, glorified cameo, um, bringing that up and reinforcing that, you could write off just his daughter being weird. Um, and so, you know, kids do weird things, right? So um, you could write that off and it wouldn't be as apparent uh, that that was a key factor in the finale of this movie. Um, so that was really one of the big ones, ones for me. Um, so at this point, I don't think that the M. Night Shyamalan formula is broken, but with this movie, the cracks are starting to show. Um, so, and you know, I, have, I didn't talk about the M. Night Shyamalan cameos in the previous movies because they were very insignificant. They weren't, didn't have a huge impact on the movie. In um, the first movie, in uh, The Sixth Sense, he was just a doctor talking to um, the kid's mom, and it was, you know, it was good. It, it, I wouldn't have noticed it was him or he didn't stick out to me at all. And then Unbreakable, he was a gentleman uh, at the sports stadium that Bruce Willis thought might be carrying drugs. Again, a significant but not overall impactful on the film in a negative way like um, his role was here in Signs. So guys, I think I, I enjoyed this movie a lot more now that I've seen it again since it's been so long since I've seen it. But this movie is not without its flaws. So 
How long has it been since you've seen Signs? Are you enjoying Filmography Friday as we walk through all of M. Night Shyamalan's films? Let me know in the comments below. And if this is your first time here at Will the Beard Reviews, hit that subscribe button. We talk about movie reviews, comic book reviews, and every week I review all of the DC TV shows on The CW. So hit subscribe so you don't miss anything. And until next time, see you at the cinema.